In this presentation, we're going to add loan payments with the use of bank feeds. In other words, we're going to see the bank decrease, the account decrease with the loan payments as they go through, and we're going to add those then to our financial statements. Get ready, because we're dropping in with Wave. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to start off by opening up our reports down below. We're going to be opening up the balance sheet, the income statement, our two financial statement reports, starting off with the balance sheet. So we'll open that up and then we're going to right click on the tab, mousing over the tab up top so that we can then duplicate it. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left, go down to the reports again. We're going to do repeat. We are going to repeat this process with the PNL profit and loss. Selecting the PL profit and loss, right clicking on the tab up top, duplicating that tab. Let's change our dates now to be in the proper time period for our work. That will be 2019. So we're going to select the drop down. We're going to be selecting the 2019 update that report. Then we'll go back to the prior tab, the uh, PL. Once again, bringing on that on back to 2019, updating that report. I'm going to go down to the bottom of these reports and show the detail for them both on the P&L and if I go on back to the uh, balance sheet, scrolling down to the to the detail there as well. So now that we have the detail, then I'm going to go to the first tab and I'm going to go down to the accounting. We're looking at, of course, those bank feeds. So we're going to be opening up the bank feeds. No, we're going a little bit out of order and you could filter this. I just want to point this out uh, as we go. You could hit the filter button and say, hey, I, I only want to see the transactions that have um, have not been categorized. So I can just say, just show me the uncategorized stuff. Uh, so and then I'm going to apply that. And that'll that'll remove all kind of the green items. So that might be something that's useful to do. I like to kind of see the green items just to show you in, in the demos, you know, what we've done thus far. But in any case, we're looking at these two these two chase payments. We're going to say that these two happen to be loan payments. So we're paying off a loan that is outstanding. So we, so how are we going to, uh, you know, record that information in our books? Now, normally, if you have the loan on the books, if you go to the balance sheet, then you'd have a liability account uh, for the loan down here. Typically, a liability account. We have one liability account, but that's not actually the loan that we're paying. The loan that we're paying, we took out at some point before we entered this stuff into the into the books. And therefore, we're actually paying off a loan that's not even on, on the books right now. So how would we deal with that? Well, there's a couple ways you can deal with the loan. One will be an adjusting kind of method, which is actually a little bit easier if you have the help of someone to adjust things or if you want to adjust it periodically. The other is to be recording a, a more difficult transaction each time. Now, let me just kind of explain this. Let's break this out a bit. Normally, when you're going to be taking out a loan... Uh, if you have a long-term loan, like to finance a car or something like that, or just a loan and you're making monthly payments on it, something similar to a mortgage type of payment, the payment is going to be the same. However, the allocation of the interest and principal will not. And therefore, you can't just like kind of memorize the transaction and know exactly what the transaction will be. It'll change each time and there'll be three accounts that are affected, which is a little bit confusing, a little bit more difficult for standard uh, bank feed type of transactions. Also, when you finance something like a car or something like that and you take out a loan, they may tell you what the payment is and the interest rate, but they may not give you the amortization table. And therefore, you, you may not know exactly what the amount should be applied to interest and principal with every loan payment. So to do it all properly, to record the interest and principal properly as you go, you would then have to obviously put the loan on the books. That would happen at the time you got the loan when you make the purchase. But a lot of times, even if you made the purchase in the current time period, and you finance something like an automobile or something like that, uh, you may want to just deal with a cash transaction, the cash component of the payment, and then ask your accountant at the end of the year or at the end of the time period to help you to, to make any adjustments that need to be made with regards to loans and large purchases of equipment or something like that that may need to be financed. And then on your side of the books, you're going, you're going to record things basically on a cash basis. So I'm, that's the method I'll, I'll kind of show you. But note that if, if you have a loan and, and you don't have an amortization table, it would, it would look something like this. You'd have to make the amortization table. And again, I would, I would advise that if you have an accountant or a tax preparer that can help you to ask them to make the amortization table, right? But if we had a loan for $72,000, let us say we're, we got the loan and then the payments were $1,359, then you'd have to break out those payments for how the 60 periods in this case of the loan. So what happens then, you'd have to break that out into an amortization table because the payments will be remaining the same oftentimes in a typical kind of loan. 
but the interest and principal portion will differ. So note that as I go from, from payment one to payment two, the amount of interest goes down, the amount of principal portion goes up. And so that, that's, and that's gonna, the, the difference in the principal portion is what's gonna be adjusting the principal balance of the loan. So for example, after the first payment, if we were to do this properly, we should record the decrease in the checking account, which we'll see in the bank feeds, but then we'd have two other accounts we'd have to affect, one being interest expense, the expense of us borrowing the money, kind of like renting a, a place, you know, like a facility, we're basically renting money. And then the other decreasing the principal, that decreasing of the principal brings the principal down to the 70,941. This is where the principal balance would be then if we had recorded the loan on the books and the decrease in the principal. Then we'd make the second payment, same payment amount that we would see come through the bank feeds, but the amount allocated to interest is now lower, the amount allocated to principal higher. And so you can see that the, the difference in terms of the change in the principal, this would then be the change in the principal. So it's, it's not easy to kind of just to uh, record these transactions if you don't have the, the amortization table for number one, there's two accounts affected, I mean, th three accounts affected instead of two, which makes it more complicated and the interest and principal portion change each time. So the other method you can use, and you, you could just say, hey, look, I'm just gonna record this amount to uh, the loan. I'm not gonna record the interest portion. And then I'm gonna ask my uh, adjusting department or my accountant at the end of the year possibly to create the amortization table to, to correct whatever the, the first loan balance is if I financed something like equipment to record that transaction properly and then adjust the, uh, the balance by breaking out the interest and principal periodically, like at the end of the year or at the end of the month. So that's what we'll do here. I'm just gonna say, hey, look, I'm just gonna record the entire loan payment to a reduction in a loan account. I'm even, I'm even gonna make up the loan account, so it's gonna be a, a, a loan account with a negative balance in it. And then my assumption is at the end of the year, I'm gonna ask my accountant, hey, this is the terms of the loan. Would you make the amortization table for me? And uh, and, and also, you know, adjust the interest portion of the loan so that it matches wherever I should be on the amortization table, in this case, after the second payment. So what that would look like then, let's, let's check this out on the bank feeds. It would be very easy then for us for, on the bank feed sides of things. We can go over and just say, here's our two loan payments. We made one at the beginning and end of the month, first two loan payments. And I'm simply gonna, gonna record this to a loan amount. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna say it's Chase, and this is gonna, I'm gonna add another loan account because this is actually a, a separate loan. So I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna add another account and I'm gonna say it's gonna be a new account and it's gonna be a liability account. I'm just gonna make a new liability account. I'm gonna put it into long-term. I typically put all the loans into long-term and then break out the short-term portion uh, if necessary uh, at the end of the year, if I need to do so. And so this is gonna be notes payable uh, maybe just note, this is just one note. It's like not multiple notes, so no S. And then I'm gonna put a, a number here and that'll be like representing the last four digits of possibly the loan uh, number. Save that, so we have it. So there we have that there. And uh, and then I could mark it down here, mark as reviewed down here. So it'll, it'll, that'll give it uh, the reviewed item, the check mark. And then I'm gonna save this. So I'm gonna save this transaction. It says, hey, we found another one. So the other one is right underneath it. So I could apply the same thing by going to that one as well. So I could say, okay, it's, we're gonna do the same thing for the second payment. The two payments we made at one at the beginning, one at the end of the month. And so now it's gonna select that second item. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, categorize it. And I'm gonna say this is going to the note payable as well. That looks good. Mark selected transaction as review. That's what I want. So we'll go ahead and do that, done. So it says, okay. Then we're gonna go back to our transactions. So those two are marked off. Let's see the effect on the financial statements. That's gonna be on the balance sheet. We're gonna go back up top, update the balance sheet. Then obviously it already came out of the checking account, the other side now in a liability account. So here it is in the liability. Notice it's a negative liability because basically we recorded the two payments, but we haven't even recorded the loan amount in there yet, right? And the point is that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna record the payments, all the payments here, and then ask my accountant at the end of the at the end of the year to say hey, this loan was on the books either before I started putting the, the loan on the books. I'd like you to make an adjusting entry for it, which would be something like, uh, you know, recording the credit to the to the liability account, and the other side the debit going to like a retained earnings or or some kind of um, equity account, 
and then they can record the, or if it was something a result of a purchase that was on the books then you could ask them to help you with the purchase that which was a non-cash purchase right maybe you purchased something just for a loan and you said hey here's the purchase of it here's the documentation i'm just recording the payments on a cash basis i'd like you to to record the purchase of it then they would be courting, credit the loan debit you know an asset computer you know fixture or furniture up up top would be the debit and then they would have that information and the depreciation stuff and that would would enable you to, to stay on a cash basis and work with the accountant periodically to make make that type of adjustment they can also then take that documentation create the amortization table with it and then break out and make an adjustment for the interest portion in other words at the end of the year if this happened to be at the end of the year they could say here's the two interest payments that that are portions of the payments that you have made i'm going to take that uh, remove that from the loan balance to bring the loan balance to the 69878 which was what it should be after the adjustment is made the other side then go into the expense for interest expense so that's how i would, I would recommend kind of possibly working things out with uh, your accountant so that you can pot you, your goal then to stay on a cash method to make things as easy as possible and see if they can help you out with some of the transactions that are going to require you to deviate from it such as like financing equipment purchasing equipment uh and uh, paying off the, the the loan balance and dealing with that amortization table the interest and the principal portion breaking those components out that's it for now let's get out of here <music>